and by doing this, America would be bringing democracy to all of Europe. The internet is full of people and products that make you feel poor. It seems to be designed in a way that makes you feel depressed and unsatisfied about your present condition. We are made to crave for things that we don't necessarily need. And once we get those things, we become excited until we realize that what we have is no longer exciting and then we should start craving for the new thing. But what if you start feeling completely satisfied with your life and happy about what you have? That would not be very good for the economy or to be precise, commercialism. A quick Google search tells us what it is. The attitude that making money is more important than anything else. Well, that says a lot about how dangerous it is. In the middle of the 18th century, the mercantile ships of different European companies used to literally go to war with each other over the right to trade in a region. But those wars are a thing of past now as the companies of today have shifted their war zone from the sea to your mind. Fundamentally, consumerism is a socio-economic model built upon the engineering of desire. The materialistic urge that powers capitalism has always existed within the human psyche, but in the early years of 20th century, the advertising industry began to use psychological techniques to basically amplify our materialistic desires and fan the flames of yearning for consuming more. On a deep psychological level, one would find that this never-ending competition leaves the consumer with an ever-increasing emptiness as we are always waiting for the newer, better and more upgraded version of things that we already have. It all started in 1920s with an Austrian-American individual, Edward Bernays. Throughout World War I, Bernays worked as a propagandist for the US President Woodrow Wilson. Bernays' job was to convince the American public that their government was doing the right thing by intervening in the World War and by doing this, America would be bringing democracy to all of Europe. And democracy was the buzzword back then. Everyone was fascinated about it. Having successfully done his job at shaping public perception and being amazed by how easily so many people had fallen for a cheap slogan, Bernays began to wonder if he could use the same techniques after the war. And he was the one who came up with a new term, public relations. Yes, PR, an offshoot of propaganda. Bernays used the works of Gustave Le Bon, a key theorist in the field of crowd psychology, Wilfred Trotter, an expert on herd thinking, and the psychoanalytical techniques using them to tap into the subconscious mind of the masses. He was quickly hired by corporations to help them sell more products. One of his earliest clients was the American tobacco company that wanted to lure in more female smokers. Smoking at that time was considered bad for women which meant that tobacco companies were missing out on about 50% of potential smokers or consumers. Bernays' task was now to change that. To remove the social stigma attached to women smoking cigarettes, he staged a bogus protest at the 1929 Easter Day Parade in New York, marching out a group of young, fashionable women and branded their cigarettes as torches of freedom. The press broadcasted Bernays' stunt across the country and helped cigarettes look cool to the potential buyers. And this worked because women who had just won the right to vote, words like freedom, justice, equality, which were attached to Bernays' protest, made more sense. So he was ready with a phrase which was torches of freedom. And so here you have a symbol, women, young women, debutantes, smoking a cigarette in public, with a phrase that means anybody who believes in this kind of equality pretty much has to support them in the ensuing debate about this because torches of freedom. We end this video by leaving you with this quote by Bernays himself. In almost every act of our daily lives, whether in the sphere of politics or business, in a social conduct or ethical thinking, we are dominated by the relatively small number of persons. It is they who pull the wires which control the public mind.